Hi guys, um, it's great to be able to share another video with you. Um, I've had a, a, had a good question, um, which I want to answer today. Well, at least I want to uh, try and answer. Um, my answer to this question is, is only going to be uh, the tip of the iceberg, okay? Um, you will need to, to search the scriptures yourself. You will need to seek God yourselves to get a deeper understanding of this question um, but I will try and help you today to consider this question and the question was this um, why does God allow suffering this is a good question um, and nothing I say here today is said lightly because I know that many of you have faced terrible struggles uh, and pain in your life already so so nothing is said lightly okay but the bible doesn't shy away from telling us about suffering jesus um, said to his disciples if anyone would come after me let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me so so we as christians you know we, we're told that we're going to face pain and, and difficulty, that, that, that life is going to be hard at times. And those who teach us in God's word about suffering know firsthand what it is to suffer as well. You know, we, we're not alone in our suffering. We, we can take great encouragement from that we're not alone in our suffering suffering follows us all okay um, and in many different ways we must we must understand that um, the writer of the of the hebrews to the to the hebrews in chapter 12 wrote this about jesus let us Run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Our Lord and our Saviour knows what it is to suffer, okay? He, he, his family were asylum seekers in Egypt. It is believed that, you know, is that, well, it is understood, rather, that, that his earthly father, Joseph, ha had died. He had passed away. He had lost friends. He had lost loved ones. You know, Jesus was betrayed. He was ridiculed. He was beaten. He was treated as a criminal. He was crucified. And he was rejected for a time by his heavenly father for us. God knows what it is to suffer. But if, you if, but if you try and take Christ out of the picture, okay, life without Christ has no answer to all the suffering we see. Because without Christ, we have no hope. This is, this is key okay um, we must understand the good news of the gospel uh, because if, if, if this life that we're living now is, is all we have then suffering does take this life uh, away from us this life that we want this life that we this full life that we desire it, it does take suffering does take that life away from us Suff suffering is suffocating our life it, it, it's stopping us from getting the fullness of life now but the bible teaches us something very different the apostle paul who who knew all too well what it was to suffer in 2 Corinthians 11, he gives us a, a, a big description of his trials uh, and his troubles. You know, and, and 
He says five times, uh, I received at the hands of the Jews the 40 lashes. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. And he carries on and on and on about his dangers, his perils. Um, and he, and he, he says, apart from the other things, there is the daily pressure on me of my anxiety for all the churches. Paul really knew what it was to suffer. Um, and this his sufferings aren't like a uh, an action movie where uh, where the hero just gets up brushes themselves off and then and then goes to act out the next scene his body um, would have borne the battle scars of his life his body would have you know had had deep injuries from from the stoning that he went through you know the people who did the stoning of Paul, you know, his, his body was so marred that they thought he was dead. They left him for dead. They thought they'd killed him. You know, that's how bad he looked. Um, the whippings that he would have had would have left huge scars um, and tissue damage on his back and sides. It was a really, really difficult time. Um, the beatings that he endured with the rods, you know, they would have probably left fractured bones and, and an internal bruising and things like this. You know, Paul, yeah, the, the injuries we see and know that Paul had, you know, should make us cringe. Um, you know, sorry to paint such a, a vivid picture, but we must learn that, that Paul writes from a position of knowing what it is to suffer in this life. From, and he also writes from the position of one who wants to see the suffering come to an end. And that's why Paul points us to Jesus. Paul knows why Christ has come. In Genesis 3, you know, we are told uh, when suffering and pain entered our world, God had created the world and it was good. But then Adam and Eve sinned. And we hear in Genesis 3 the description of, of the consequences of their sin. Um, and he rebukes, the Lord rebukes the serpent and he says to the serpent, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. This is an amazing picture of what the seed, the one who would come, the sent one of God would do. He would crush Satan's head with his foot um, but Satan would bruise his heel thinking about the cross there and to the woman he said I will surely multiply your pain in childbearing in pain you shall bring forth children your desire shall be contrary to your husband but he shall rule over you so in this, in this moment, we see the pain coming into the world. We see this conflict between man and woman who once in the garden were living in perfect unity and har harmony. But now we see the conflict coming into the world through their sin. And, he, and God says to Adam, because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it, cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread, till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Here we see that life is no longer going to be the same. Life is going to be hard. And we see there in the end of verse 19, the, the, the problem is, that, is now that there is death. 
death has come into the world. See, the Bible doesn't shy away from telling us that we are going to go through suffering. But what the Bible points us to, and all the saints who God has inspired to write in his word, they point us to the serpent crusher, the one who will crush the serpent's head. He will conquer sin and death. Suffering leads ultimately to death. That's the big issue. That's the, what needs to be conquered. And Christ came to conquer sin and death. This is glorious. Um, Isaiah prophesied in chapter 25. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. This is what Christ has come to do victoriously on the cross and in the resurrection. He has come to swallow up death forever. And then this is the glorious truth that we have through faith in Christ is that the Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. See, without Christ, we have no hope because, because we, will be, we will be chasing after uh, something in this life. You know, that, that thing could be, could be riches, it could be uh, the perfect body, it could be, it could be fame, and it could, it could be, you know, devoting our lives to, to our work. But these things will not satisfy us. And sometimes, you know, suffering can, can stop us, it, it feels like, from getting the goals that we desire. But what happens is, ultimately, is eventually death stops us. Death will always get the victory. We have to see that death is the greatest enemy. But in Christ, and this is the wonderful promise of the gospel, is that we have a sure and certain hope. Just as Jesus Christ was raised to new life, so we too will be raised to new life in him. This is the wonderful news of the gospel. This is why the Apostle Paul, who, who knew what it was to suffer, he could write these things. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. What no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. Suffering is a consequence of the fall. And sadly we see its effects all around us, all the time. But in Christ we have a hope for another life an eternal life with the one who was willing to come and join us in our mess and save us. One who could forgive our sins. One who could save us from eternal death. Glory be to our God. Praise the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. God bless, guys. Thanks for listening. I hope that helps and I hope that encourages you to press on to get to know more about our wonderful God. God bless. Bye-bye.